I'm kind of shaped odd in the video. I'm actually laying across my bed, but um, I was actually going through Facebook and um, I actually came across a post and I'm pretty sure it's already made it all the way across all type of uh, social media about uh, Kirk Franklin and for the most part and how he actually have come to the conclusion that the black church has become somewhat homophobic uh, when it actually in its dealings with, you know, transsexuals, gays and that sort of thing. And because of that, he actually wants um, the black church, I guess, to apologize uh, for that particular action, which I think is a bit ridiculous. And I, I really didn't, you know, see this coming. But the issue is that, you know, the Bible always tells us to watch as well as pray. And I am, you know, a firm believer in, you know, praying because and, and you know, communing and trying to stay as close to God as I possibly can. Because when he does that, he has a tendency to reveal a lot of things to you, you know, things that you would never thought that would be that actually ends up, you know, being what it is. You know what I'm saying? As far as my uh, as far as my view on Kurt Franklin, like I said, I really didn't have much of an opinion, even though he would do things in the past that would be a bit questionable. You know, I like I say, you know, don't tend to, you know, condemn anybody on that level, if you know what I mean, you know, regarding how they express themselves, you know, as far as their worship, because I believe that, you know, whenever you're worshiping, the Bible says that let everything that has breath praise the Lord, you know, and there is no specific way to praise. Now, with that being said, you know, there are some things that you, you know, that you already know that a bit over the top. I mean, you don't sit up there and shake your booty and twerking and saying that you're praising the Lord. No, don't get crazy with it. But just generally speaking, you know, the mode and the style of his music and everything and how he would move and do all these different odd James Brown type moves and stuff like that over the dance floor. You know, he praising God. I'm like, OK, well, who am I to condemn him? You know, let him do his thing. It is what it is. You know, it, like I say, you know, I didn't want to, you know, be coming off as, as they would say, judgmental. But this latest stunt, I don't know if it's because he's wanting to gain popularity, if what he's wanting to do. You know, I think for the most part, we need to go back and re-examine a lot of things, you know, and really put some things in perspective when you're talking about uh, apologizing, you know, to that particular lifestyle, that way of life, if you will, for the most part. Now, as far as his music goes, and I'm going to get into, you know, the breakdown and stuff, but as far as his music goes, like I said, you know, I like the video that he did where he says, you know, smile. I like that video, you know, and like I said, you know, sometimes I refer to my I'm having to go back to listen to that video when I'm feeling, you know, a bit down and, you know, have the blues or whatever the case may be. And I like to look at listen to something that may, you know, lift me up, you know, and like I say, very few of his type of music actually does that, even though there is a selected few that I actually listen to you know like i said that would put me in an upbeat mood after feeling down for whatever the reason is but this latest i guess wave or this latest request of his that he wants black churches to do now you may have some black folks some black leaders in churches that may actually follow suit and do that and like i say you know i the only thing i can say is shame on them I'm not going to apologize for any of my views regarding that, because, again, you know, whenever you're a follower of Christ, whenever you're actually saying that, you know, I'm going to follow the precepts and the regulations and everything that, you know, that's set forth in the Bible, you ought to believe that there's going to be opposition. And the thing about it is that, you know, you got people, you know, and, and I and I believe in the fact that there is an uncovering that's going on where, you know, the covers are being drawn back, you know. And, and 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 the thing about it is that it it's it can be really unbelievable because of the people that's actually being really exposed, if you will. But you know, you still have to stand true to your faith. And and this time, in these days and times, you know, Christian folk, you know, those who choose to serve the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul, you know, it's it's it, they're facing a lot of oppositions, you know. And the thing about it again is that, you know, when facing opposition, even in facing opposition, God says that He still has our back. You know, he still will be there to comfort us, to lead and guide us, to let us know pretty much not on how not to fall for the traps that the enemy has set before you. Because that's pretty much um, our life's struggle or our life's uh, journey, if you will, is to stay free and, you know, to pray that we don't fall into the traps of the enemy because his overall, his overall destination is to destroy you by manipulation. Now... I don't like when people use the word homophobia. 
I'm just talking about me personally. I don't like when people sit up there and actually already, you know, say that, you know, okay, you speak against what I'm doing, so you must be homophobic. Now, when you're breaking things down, and of course, people know me, like I say, when I listen to folks and people come to me with that, and like I say, you know, I have to really stop and really think before I really speak. And like I say, I do that for a reason. That's really, and that's really the way that I roll. That's my mode of operation. I don't really say anything, you know, until I actually think about what I'm about to say, because I want what I have to say to make sense. You know, I've, I, I don't know. That's just something that I just that's just ingrained in me. You know, I don't automatically give a knee jerk reaction and a response to something, because, again, most of the time when you're dealing with the issues regarding homosexuality and their lifestyle is always based on what I said in my last video, which is emotion. That's how they get their foot ground. That's how the enemy is able to use that particular lifestyle to manipulate and twist to pull at the heartstrings of the heart. And we already know that if you can get to the heartstring, you know, and pull on it and manipulate it, if you can and you do it long enough and are skillful and crafty with what you're doing, nine times out of ten, in most cases, you're going to succeed. But the thing about it is that homophobia means that it's, it's a fear. And the thing about it is that it's a fear... You know, and when we talk about something that that's, we're fearful, it's something that we are saying that we don't know much about. So in order for us to deal with it, we become afraid of it, meaning that we don't really want to have to deal with it at all. Again, like I say, I'm just giving it to you my way. Like I say, you don't have to agree. This is just the way that I'm actually, you know, doing it my way. When he's saying that, you know, he wants to apologize and give the message to transsexuals and gays or whatever else that we're sorry for, you know, the way the word is cutting and all this other type of stuff, the way that it is exposing your truth. I have to actually question him now. I mean, I've always kind of had, you know, something in the back of my mind like, OK, what's going on? You know, he's a bit, you know, on the unknown side. And I'll just leave it at that. You can use it at whatever interpretation you want. I said, you know what? I'll let him be. I'll let him do his thing because, like, again, we're all different. You know, we're all children of God. But now with this latest stunt, it's like, okay, all the things that I've been seeing in the past, now it's starting to really make sense. And the puzzle is really starting to come together. You cannot sit there and say that, you know, the God that you serve, that you've been, you know, true to, who will accept no sin, ask him to all of a sudden be apologetic and actually apologize for how fierce his word is when condemning that particular sin. When you're when a person, when somebody says that you're homophobic, the issue is that it's not, God says that I come, I don't give you the spirit of fear. I give you the period of love and of sound mind and, you know, where he will actually give us the ability to combat these things that the enemy is throwing in our way, our paths to try to get us to submit. And see what we got to understand, though, this whole thing is nothing but the trick of the devil. And I'm surprised, but not really too surprised, but I'm really, you know, at an awe that the enemy is using this particular individual to sell the message that black folks, that Christian folks, and like, like I say, I don't like to leave, I, 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 I want to leave color blank, I want to leave color out of this because religion has no color. He wants the Christian faith, and some may say the, ap 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 the apostolic faith, to apologize because the word of God is too strong for the homosexuals. It cuts them too deep. It makes them consider their ways. So we should actually apologize to them on behalf of God to let them know that, you know, even though it's cutting you, we don't want it to hurt that bad. We want, we do, actually to tell you the truth, we want it to not even hurt at all because we want to change the meaning of what it is so you won't have to consider your ways. I am at an awe because the thing about it, I was actually going through my Facebook post, you know, my feed or whatever. And I saw this and I'm like, he's looking a little bit different. I don't know what's going on. I know he stopped making music for a little while. I don't know what he was going through during that time frame between the last time he made music and up until now. Like I say, but something went wrong somewhere. I don't know where it went wrong, but something went wrong somewhere where now, you know, somebody, somebody has gotten him into suggesting or he's actually gotten to the point where he, the enemy has gotten into his mind frame to suggest certain things. And now he's accepted into his spirit and now it's become his truth. When you say that you love someone, that means that you love them enough to tell them the truth that they may be saved, sanctified, and choose a different form of style of living. I'm not going to sit up there and sit up there and say, I love you when I see that you're doing something that's going to be detrimental to your spiritual being. That means I don't love you. 
That means that I am sitting up there letting you, I'm loving you all right. I'm loving you straight to hell is what I'm doing. Anytime you neglect to tell someone the truth when you know that it's actually going to destroy them if they continue on in that particular lifestyle or whatever, you are endangering them in hellfire. And guess what? Because of the fact that you saw it and you didn't do anything to rebuke and cast out or actually give it the truth that it needs, guess what? You might as well dig a space for you to, to join them in hell because you're going to be sitting right next to them. It's a shame that we actually, and the thing about it is that the, the spirit of discernment is very much needed in this day and time. I don't know how often, and I say it all the time in my church, you know, I go to, I'm a member of a small church. I'm not ashamed to say, like I say, and the thing about it again is that we have our issues and everything just like any other church, mega churches or whatever the case may be. But for some reason, people want to be liked. People want to be praised. People want to be famous and they will do anything they can, even if it means selling their soul to the devil to reach that point in their life. And like I say, you know, I'm not here to, as they say, judge anybody, but you have to call things and put things in its proper perspective. Homophobia is nothing more than a trick of the enemy that he's using to get a, a, a stronghold into the kingdom of Christ. And he's going to work it in any way that he can using anybody that he can to accomplish that agenda. Today is Kurt Franklin. Who, who is it going to be tomorrow? Out of all the time that you've been serving God, all of a sudden now you've had this awakening that the black folks have actually been homophobic and actually treating uh, gays or whatever, you know, bad according to him. The issue is that this whole thing trying to pull at the heartstrings is not going to work. I can say it's not going to work with me. I can't speak from the next in, from one individual to the next. But with me, like I say, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Now, if you look at that as being homophobic and hateful or whatever, that's all on you. Interpretation, as I tell a lot of people, is actually in the um, ears. It's left up to the ears of those who choose to listen. I know what the meaning and, the, and thy purpose of what's being said and the reason why I'm saying it. Now, you can interpret and look at it as a form of hate if you want to. That's all on you. I can't deal with that. I cannot. That I'm not responsible for your interpretation. All I can do is give you the word of God. That's all I'm required to do is to give you the word of God. What you do with it is totally up to you. You can use it to, you know, to build you up, to edify you, or you can use that to tear you down, you know, and, and like that such thing. This type of stuff where you're talking about homosexuality in the church, this is not anything that's new. This is something that's been going on for decades, you know, centuries, whatever you want to call it. You got it all over the place. And the, th the thing about it is that they're so rampant now that you can identify them almost just by the blink of an eye. You can look at, go to almost any church now on a, in a sense and look at them. They're in the pulpit. They are directing our choirs. They are, you know, teaching Sunday schools, you know, they're doing all of these types of things. They wanting, they're wanting to make their presence known to let you know that, okay, we've got the president behind us now who is actually, you know, telling us that we are somebody in society, that we have a voice. So guess what? We are going to go and actually try to infiltrate and spread our message to anybody in every place where people congregate to let you know that we're here and we're not going anywhere. Now, the minute you have someone that sit there and say, no, I don't care what your president says or who you think that got your back. You ain't coming in here with that mess because God forbids it. And so do I. When you have somebody that stands true in their faith with that, all of a sudden you're hating me. You're hating me. How dare you talk to me like that? You don't love us. God says that you he's a God of love. You're not you can't be of God. If you don't, if you if you're saying that you don't like us, that you hate us, why can't you accept us? What am I supposed to accept? You tell me, what am I supposed to accept? All because you got a, a corrupt president to tell you that it's okay for you to be what you think you are, that you was this way from birth and all this other nonsense, which I think is a bunch of crap. What is it? What, what am I, what is there left for me to accept? I will not compromise my faith just to be in good standing, with, to be liked by somebody. I'm comfortable with being on the outside. Again, there's, that's, that's, there's no other place I would rather be because that lets you know I'm not going to go along with what society says is normal. People do that, and that's why, you know, a lot of them end up in the end being disappointed because they know that the fame that they're going for is not as sweet as they thought it was. And then after, it, after all is said and done, they have to turn around. They have to go back to a God now that's angry with them. It's a, it's a scary thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. 
because God can do so much destruction at a clink at the at the bat of an eye, you know, the twip of the hands or whatever the case may be, or the snap of the fingers. He could do a lot of damage. And people need to stop sitting up there thinking that God is a play toy. God is not a play toy, folks. He's not, he's not playing at all. When he says that no sin shall enter therein, he means that. The enemy goes behind and tries to trick you after God done laid down a law and tell you that what God just said doesn't have much meaning. He doesn't, it, he doesn't mean that this is what he's meaning. It doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Excuse me. If he tells us that the consequence of sin is death, and, and it's not so much the physical death. He's talking about the spiritual death. You know, the thing about it is that it's something to be eternally cut off from the move of God where God doesn't talk to you anymore. That's a scary place to be, folks. And you don't want to actually fall into that situation where God turns his back on you and says, you know what? I, I wash my hands of you. I give you over to the spirit of reprobation. And he sounds like a reprobated person right about now, because that right there, that doesn't sound like somebody who is strong in their faith in God. It's up there to tell somebody that, you know what, it's time. Now, like I say now, like I'll say this. We already know that God says with love and kindness, that's how he draws people. You draw more people with honey than you do with vinegar. We know all of these cliches, but the issue is that this is a, a sin that's been around for a long time. And folks know the repercussions of this. He spoke about it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He even destroyed a whole city behind this type of stuff. Like I say, so you tell me. With all of that being said, all of a sudden now we're supposed to turn around and be accepting and open to that. I love the individual. I hate the sin. Just like, you know, I'm not perfect. I have a lot of things that, that God, that I, that I may do on a day-to-day basis that God don't like with me. And he's praying, you know, and I'm asking, Lord, please help me to deliver me from this. Help me to deal with this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not an angel. Like I say, I'm a human being and I'm subject to the sins just like anybody else. But there are certain things that you have to be able to identify and say, no way. Uh-uh. And I don't care if it comes from T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, all of Joel Osteen, all of these other people who are high prominent that are on their on the uh, airways that are teaching and preaching the word of God. If they come with to you talking about something to be open and accepting that stuff, you know what? You need to try better to just. Get that Holy Ghost so you can get some discernment. Because this is unbelievable. I mean, like I say, you know, I was like, wow. I'm like, I understand that, you know, you know, that we're all unique individuals. And like I say, no two, pe no two people praise God the same. You know, the Holy Ghost moves on people, you know, in different ways from one person to the next. But to sit up there and compromise all of that. To come up here and deliver this trash in my face and say that, you know. Black that, you know, my pastor, because I belong to a black church that, you know, my pastor, and my, my, my fellowship, my faith has to apologize to the devil or apologize to sin because it cuts too deep. It causes people to see the error of their ways. I got to apologize for that. Are you a fool? Apparently you are. You a fool. All right. You're a big fool. God's word ain't changing for nobody, fella. It never has and it never will. We are the ones that have to change to align with the vision that God has for us as mankind. We are the ones that have to do the changing. And if we accept God at his word that his son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, that we may be free. Guess what? We are becoming that changed individual that God says that we are needing to be if we were to make it from here to glory. I don't understand what's going on with folks. Like I say, you know, and the thing about it, it's going to get a lot worse than this. That's the only thing I can say. It's going to get a lot worse than this. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I know, like I say, it may have freaked out a lot of people. I won't say that I was freaked out, but I was like, you know what? Wow. You know, and the thing about, like I say, that's the scary part about is that the enemy, the Antichrist. He's implementing and using emotion. And the thing about it is that he's fooling the very elect. He said that he's doing that. The Bible says that the devil goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. And the thing about it, he's using every tactic and every technique that he possibly can to accomplish that goal. We as the people of God have to take a stand. We have to take a stand against this rhetoric. We have to take a stand against those who are in Hollywood who feels that they got enough power and the likes of people that they can go and say stupid things. And we have to accept it just because of who they are. 
If you're not, if you are not following God, I'm not following you. That's that's plain and simple. My pastor tells us that all the time. She say, anytime you see that I'm not following God, you know what you need to pick up and go find somewhere else that you need to go. And I am a firm believer in that. I will not compromise my faith just to be liked by people. Okay, peace out, folks.